I'm playing to Dodoria. Yo, oh, oh, shh. What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joe Crew DMD, and I am here today with a deck profile on Green Go Tanks, the yeah! star player, the star of the show. When I, when I was a kid, he was definitely my favorite character. I thought it was so much fun. I thought it was so cool. This young boy going SS3 and bopping boo. So awesome. But before I get into this video, I gotta give some shout out. First and foremost, huge shout out to my teammate, Chris Spencer, UniXDB. If you haven't seen his channel, you gotta check it out. I'll drop a link in the description below. Chris got first place at the first big in-person event event gen con i know there's some discrepancies about what happened how he ended up in first but the reality is when you go to an event there's luck involved and there's chance involved and he straight up got it with the leader that he announced it was his pet deck and he got in there and landed in first place so big shout out to chris second shout out to my sensei miguel and phil phil urban if you guys are watching this video thank you for recommending this deck to me i've never played it i love go tanks i'm not a huge fan of green but it was a really fun deck to play it's very versatile and as much as i hate hand control if you can't beat them, join them sometimes. Anyway, those are the shout outs. If this is your guys' first time here and you want to see Dragon Ball Super Card Game content on a weekly basis, smush that subscription yeah, button. And if you're a returning member of the Joe Crew, let's check out this deck because it is waku waku. This is some exciting stuff, let me tell you. All right, the most important thing when you're making a deck, you got to keep it in a powerful deck box. So I have a very powerful deck box here with stickers from Super Rose and Choto Minute. This one uh, definitely makes sure that my deck is very strong with this snake man let's get into the deck this is the leader this is gotenks yes, really yeah. fun leader so basically when he swings he draws a card normal and he has two awakening conditions you can either awaken when your life's at four or less or you can awaken when you have a unison specified cost of two in play and his awakens the same either way you untap one draw one so you pretty much usually get a turn to awaken and when you awaken with a unison you rip your life down to six on his awaken side yeah, it's really it's interesting there's a permanent that says your opponent's leader cards can't attack battle card which kind of works with the unison which we'll get into and i'll explain that now when he swings he draws a card normal and he has a two optional activate mains one activate main is you can choose one of your opponent's unison cards and remove a marker from it which is very strong and the other activate main is you can choose one green card in your hand discard it and create two ghost tokens in rest mode which really helps build pressure over the course of the game so really good leader great looking leader i love the leader i think i'm going to be playing him for a little while but the thing that i like most about this deck is this deck is like a show it's like you got the highlight players you got the stars of the show you've got the you know the entertainers the introducers and i love theater i love doing theatrical stuff it's actually why i make these videos i'm gonna go through the deck talk about the plays go through the sequencing and explain how wonderfully theatrical it is of course in every good show you have the opening act the opening act in gotenks is gokule the legendary fusion warrior uh goku and hercule fused here this guy is really good and you want to open into him so you're pretty much gonna hard mulligan for your unison and this man and basically what this man does is you pay one for him, you play him, and you search your deck for the six drop go tanks, which we'll get to. On turn two, if you're able to have your unison in hand, you play your unison, awaken, then you use your other energy to activate main on him, send him to your drop area, reveal your go tanks, and when you reveal the go tanks, you can go into your deck and grab your fusion pieces for go tanks. So it really turns the engine of this deck on, but this man is the opening act, and he is so important to get out there and get in there. You really want to see him in your opening hand but if you don't this deck still can go off and there's a lot of directions in which it can go off after the opening act of course we have the main entertainer and this man he wants to stay on board he is in the show the whole time you pay two energy for him he's a two cost unison and he's a two cost unison plus two so he gets markers fast and once per turn when you activate a union skill you get to draw off the trigger for him and his plus two is all of your mono green cards gain revenge until the start of your next turn so if your opponent's battle cards are swinging in at your battle cards they're basically going to die because they all have revenge and what's really cool about the leader is the leader doesn't allow your opponent's leader cards to swing into your battle cards so your opponent essentially has to pressure your battle cards with unisons or their battle cards, or they just have to have skills that remove them. And this guy's minus seven is insane. So if people don't go after this unison and he sits there, he gets very, very dangerous. Basically his minus seven is you 
look at your opponent's life. Choose one of the cards in their life, put it in their drop area, and then rip three cards out of their hand, which is insane. Your opponent is gonna need to deal with this guy, so they're probably not gonna be swinging at your leader, and we have some things to deal with that to get you down from six to four into super combo range, and I'll go through that when we get there. And of course, we have the star of the show, Go Tanks, the Grim Reaper of Justice. This card is nuts. He has Deflect, which is awesome because he can't get counterplayed. Dual Attack 25k, which is very strong. And when he comes in, he comes in for two energy off Union Fusion. So you drop a Trunks and a Goten in your drop area, and then you draw two cards, KO one of your battle cards, and he's also going to proc your Unison to draw another card. So you're dropping two cards and drawing two cards. And the cards that you drop, one of them also looks for a card. So we'll get into how that works. But basically, this guy is awesome. He's also a six cost, which is very important. And we'll get into that towards the end of the deck. But super, super useful card. Lots of utility. And he's the star of the show. Look at this shiny ball he's got in his hand. He's about to throw it down. Blast, blast boo in the brain. Next, we have Goten and Trunks. And I apologize deeply for this non-foil. I only pulled three of these foils. It's on the way, but I had to make this deck profile. And I had to play with a non-foil yesterday. And it hurt. Definitely hurt. Especially because these are anniversary box foils. So they look so good. These came out in the last anniversary box. But what's awesome about this card is it counts as Goten and Trunks. So one of these cards can be your Goten and one of these cards can be your Trunks. It doesn't have any skills that search off of things when you drop them, but it's very, very useful that you get both of your targets off of one card. So when you pay one with Gokule and you put him in a drop area and you reveal your Grim Reaper, you're gonna look through your deck for one of these and one of the Trunks, and we'll show the Trunks next. But these boys definitely get in for the show. I mean, they're entertainers in themselves, very entertaining young lads. The fact that they can go Super Saiyan before they're like three feet tall is just crazy. How wild is that? How strong are these guys gonna be in Super? I mean, when these boys grow up, they were going SS3 when they were like five. Come on, let's get real. The Trunks I'm using for the Union Fusion is this Trunks. And the reason why I'm using this Trunks is because he searches out a Unison. So basically the way you're gonna do this is you're gonna drop this Trunks and you're gonna drop the Goten. And since you're the turn player, you get to decide how your autos resolve first. So your auto from dropping him is gonna resolve. You search your top seven cards and search a two cost Unison. So if on turn two, you don't have your Unison, you can pay two energy, Union Fusion into your Grim Reaper, drop him, search your Unison off your top seven, which is pretty good. And then Gotenks is gonna draw two cards. And if your Unison were on board, it would draw a card. But just to plus on the Unison and plus your other cards, that Unison may really come in handy if you're at six markers and you need a minus seven. You just bottom a Unison onto the one on board, minus seven, and then it is basically gonna be GG from that point. I'm playing one of these SS3 Go Tanks All Out Assault. Uh, it's a lot of energy to invest since it is a three energy card. You can evolve it on the other Grim Reaper. And when you evolve it, you're gonna get his on play auto. So basically when this card comes into play, you choose one of your opponents using unison cards, remove two markers from it, and then choose one of your opponents battle cards, ignoring barrier and KO it. So if you play him with union fusion, you get to draw one card, but the really useful thing here is the unison marker removal and the fact that you can just pop something ignoring barrier. So really, really strong card and definitely gets in there against things that are annoying to deal with that your opponent's gonna defend, just blows it up. Now we're gonna get into our unison plays another very entertaining character here we have frieza the charismatic villain and his charisma comes across clearly as he enters the show and he is squeezing his abdominal muscles while he is attempting the valsalva maneuver basically this guy's your free counter when you have a unison with two or more markers on it you can play him for free and what's really cool about him is his auto is not connected to his counterplay skill. So you can still hit stuff with deflect. So if your opponent plays a card with deflect, you still get a counter window to play this card. And since the skill is not connected to the counterplay, the skill will proc off the auto. So once the auto comes into play, you can just pop things like the new four drop blue, yellow Zamasu. You can counterplay that with this when you get the counterplay window. And then once it comes into play, you just use this auto and pop the Zamasu. So get rid of that double strike and then they just have their blocker tokens and there's ways to deal with that too. But we will get into that. But a very, very entertaining character here and a gorgeous looking card. I'm playing 
playing one little Gohi. I only have one pre-release. And I feel like this card, like you're really only gonna play it once, maybe twice a game. Uh, it's gonna become a revenge blocker, which is really good. But a lot of times we're just using this to get one more on board and get that extra cost on board because we'll get into it. But basically, if you have a unison cost in play with specified cost of two, you can play him for free. And he has blocker. So you just play him for free. You plus two on your unison, give him revenge. And then if your opponent swings with any battle card, you basically just turn this guy sideways and then they die to revenge. Since I'm playing the uh, Frieza Counterplay, it's a perfect target for his few Zamasu Deity's Wrath. I had this at three, but I didn't really resolve it that much. He got on board, I would say most games, but never really played more than one. I feel like if you're playing green and you're dropping your counterplay, people are going to know this guy's coming. So they're either going to want to neg your counterplay or pop it or get rid of it or somehow, and then you lose your target for him. But it looks beautiful in your energy. And I think two is fine for the deck. And of course, one of the most busted negates in the game, Dorm potential unleashed this card is insane it's so good it's so useful in this list basically it's a free negate and your opponent will only get one more swing after the current swing for the duration of the turn in order to get that effect you have to drop a card but there's a lot of cards that you want in your drop area here anyway so there are targets that are great for this and also if you don't need that extra unison that you found off trunks you can just drop it for this cost what's also really great about this is you can clear tokens with it so if your opponent did play that new zamasu and they play the zamasu you counterplay the zamasu with your frieza pop the zamasu and then they swing with their leader and then you just negate and drop something all their tokens are gone so this really deals with a lot of stuff it's a really strong negate it's free and it's also fine to pay one for this if you don't have a unison on board but you have to see this card and this card allows you kind of to go the distance in the game so really really strong negate very very useful and it synergizes really well with the deck i'm playing two dodoria dodoria is really good because he's just this thick boy that's coming in for the party he's showing up and saying hey didn't invite me but i'm playing and basically what happens when your opponent counter attacks with a floodgate like Topo or Oceanus or the new Boo, you can basically pay one and negate that Floodgates play. And what I mean by that is the Floodgates only get their effects if they come into play. The counter, the effects of the Floodgates are almost never attached to the counter attack skill. The counter attack is negate the attack and then the auto is normally when this card is played, your opponent can only attack if they drop cards or if they mill five cards or whatever. So leaving an energy up for him offensively when you're starting to go in for your kill turn and you swing and they tap those two energy for their floodgate and you counterplay their floodgate, they are in deep trouble because they just paid two energy for something that they're not getting the effect of. They're still gonna get the negate, but they're not gonna be able to floodgate you for the turn. And when this deck goes in, it goes in. So Dodoria is actually, it's really great that he came to the party. I know he wasn't invited and I know it wasn't like he was supposed to be there, but but it's really great that he showed up and i think two of them is really good in the deck shout out to my sensei miguel this was totally his idea shocking death ball this card is so necessary and the reason why you want to run this card is because a lot of times you're not going to go under six for a while people are going to be swinging at your unison if they're a good player because they're going to want to kill your unison and your unison is going to keep plusing two and plusing two and plusing two so in order to get yourself into super combo range this is really useful because you'll likely have dormanted and drop something you'll probably have dropped your union pieces so you're gonna have five in your drop area pretty quickly and this allows you to take a life to negate to get you down to five which gets you one away from super combo range so i think two two shocking death balls is the right number it also has a secondary effect that when you negate with it you can pop something two or less you can pop blockers you can pop little weenies like whatever you need to pop you can pop them with this so shocking death ball is a great negate and it's nice to get help get you down to that super combo range now I know what you're thinking, Joku, but you're at five. You still can't super combo. Well, that's where the boy Homicidal Clones comes in. And I'm just running one. I know maybe two is a better number. I don't really want to run eight negates. I think seven is fine. I think Shocking Death Ball, it's nice to have that hard negate that also has, you can play pay with for sparking. Homicidal Clones is great because you can pay for it with your life when you're at five. It creates a blocker token and the blocker token has combo power. So really, really strong negate. And this is what gets you into super combo range. So if you can Shocking Death Ball, all your way down to five and you have homicidal clones in hand you're going to be able to get into that super combo range or if not you can just use your second shocking death ball get yourself into super combo range and then paragus the powerful peepaw comes in this super combo is the best super combo in the game and it's basically like those super combos from set 11 that let you draw two and bottom deck one but what's amazing about this guy is he draws first and you warp one which is not as good as bottom decking in my opinion but he always has 10k bait 
pace. So if you're not in super combo range and you're going for game and you need that combo power, you can still combo with him for free and you get that 10K extra combo power. So Paragus, the defending Peepaw is an amazing, amazing super combo. I'm so glad they reprinted it also because this parallel foil looks so dang good. So really, really great super combo. When you see this guy, it's just like, it's a good day if you're in range because you're just gonna get so many more cards and gain so much value. And there's definitely dead cards in your hand in this deck so you can just warp them away. I decided to play two cells, Earth Destroying Command Man. I didn't have this in the deck yesterday. I had Surprise Attack Frieza, but in thinking about it, I think this is a better use of one energy. Oftentimes with Surprise Attack Frieza, I'll just forget that he's in my hand and forget to proc it. If you're swinging with Surprise Attack Frieza, you're potentially gonna crit a life off your opponent. But in this deck, you kind of want to get your opponent to four and keep them there. So this actually does more work for you than the crit because this is not taking a card out of their life, it's taking a card out of your, their hand and you choose and he gives 15K combo power. So if you were to have a few Zamasu on board and you swing with this and give it that 15K combo power, once, if they're gonna try and neg the Indestructible off board, they're gonna have to neg it 35K and you're ripping a card out of their hand and they're dropping a card for Zamasu. So really, really strong card. I think two of is good in the list. And of course, since there's a collector selection version, Gotta run it. Now we get to the real stars of the show. Rebrienne. Rebrienne. I had this at three and I wish I had it at four. This card is so busted. It's so annoying. I hate hand destruction, but this is honestly what's gonna win you the game. And if you wanna win these games and have some fun with Gotenks, Rebrienne gets in there. When you can drop her off of Dormant, you pay two energy, warp her from your drop, and your opponent has to discard two cards. And with the amount of cards that people are drawing right now, it seems like this doesn't really do much and it can't keep up, but two cards hurts. And if you sells Kamehameha, that's three. Fuse Zamasu, that's four. Another Rebrienne, that's five. Unison, that goes to eight. And then there's a way to get that to 11 and possibly even 13. I mean, you can totally tear somebody's hand apart in a turn if you have your board set up and if you have your drop set up. So Rebrand is definitely a star of the show and I got to have her at four. Next up, we have Rosie, the Blast Manipulator, another highlight player, star of the show. She's coming in and you can see she's very theatrical with her costume. This card's nuts. You play it for three, it's going to get triple attack that turn and your opponent's going to have to discard two and it has deflect. So no matter what, your opponent opponent is discarding two cards and you get a triple attack which can basically just kill unisons so there's a lot of powerful stuff going on with this card this in conjunction with rebrand you can totally just tear people's hands apart i was running two but i think three is the right number because there were a lot of times where i had the energy for it and i wanted to see it and i didn't have it and i didn't see it and I should have seen it. One Secret Identity, Mass Sand. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of removal in this deck with the Gotenks and also with the Dormants. Sometimes you just need to wipe a board in the middle of the game, but you gotta be careful with your overwhelms because when Gotenks gets removed or dies, you get to get your fusion pieces back from the drop and you also need your rebrands in the drop. I made this mistake a couple of times yesterday where I overwhelmed and I still had rebrands in the drop and I had energy to use the rebrands. So just a hardcore misplay, but it happens and you have to be careful with your overwhelm and set it up properly and play it properly but i'm just playing one and then i keep other overall options in the side deck furthering destruction champa should be in every deck shout out to my, my senpai, my senpai Johnny. Johnny home. Always says home. this is just an alternate win condition and he's totally right the only thing that's really going to stop this is vegeta's final flash and it happened to me yesterday but that's life and it's okay uh really really strong card you should totally have it in every deck and just gives your card double strike that you're swinging with so really really useful and of course the secret rare we're playing is unsafe Speakable abomination cell. The man with the very thick potato sitting between his legs. He's always sitting on a potato. If you haven't seen my SCR story, I do have a story about how Cell Zeno, the unspeakable abomination, came about. Um, this card was like 800 bucks and it dropped to like 150. So if you want this card, pick it up now because it's still insanely good. Anybody that was playing this before turn five anyway is a jerk. The fact that you can rip three cards out of your opponent's hand and it gets dual attack and it's quad strike is like these very very, very few cards that can deal with this card. Um, and the likelihood that your opponent is gonna have that card to deal with this card is also low because you may rip it out of their hand before with Rebrand or Rosie or whatever. And your opponent has three cards in hand by the time you play this thing, like they're probably not gonna stop it. You get two quad strikes and you get to rip three out of their hand. So this guy's the finisher. And that's why it's important to have all these six cost cards because if you have two Grim Reapers on board, there's your cost for this. If you have a Grim Reaper and two Rosies, there's your cost for this. There's a lot of 
of different ways to build your cost for Unspeakable Abomination, and he's pretty much always live by turn five. So if you have him in hand and your board is there, or you just need to rebuild your board there, like it's very easy to do, and this guy is lethal. Of course, since the leader uh, creates tokens, we gotta go through some of our tokens. So this is my Doken Battle UI custom uh, Goku token. Thank and then I have my Boa Hancock tokens. Gotta have the Boa tokens. And the, this is a Boa card from some card ass game. They have other sides too, but that's for another life. Anyway, guys, this has been the deck profile. I did manage to slide into top 16 on the Gen Con online regional. I have never played this deck. It basically runs itself a lot. You gotta remember a lot of triggers and a lot of things to proc. So definitely have to study it if you wanna play it and take the time to figure out how it works. But there's room for tech in this deck. You can change it up to play that you want. And the fact that you can draw cards off your Union Fusion and discard your opponent's hand just makes it really, really strong. And I think a very good meta pick right now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see more content, make sure to smush that subscription button if you're a returning member of the Joe Crew. Thank you. And I can't end the episode without doing a dental tooth tip. I am a dentist and I got to give dental advice in these videos because if I don't, who will? My dental advice to you is don't wait to be in pain to go to the dentist because if you are in pain, by the time you visit your doctor, that tooth's probably going to need to come out or there's probably going to need to be a root canal in the tooth or there's probably going to be some issue with the tooth. Just go to your doctor routinely, get your teeth checked out, make sure they're healthy, make sure you're taking care of them, make sure you could have a good oral hygiene routine and make sure that you're going to have a happy, healthy smile for the rest of your life. Because if you take care of your teeth now, when you get old, your teeth will take care of you. I'm Joku DMD and I'll see you guys next time. だが全力はこんなものではないぞ。